What's your full team? <laughs> oh, uh, Wait, that answer will be question short. The, uh, the question will be answered shortly. Uh, welcome back to the Trader Shed Treasure Hunt number 11. We are now bringing you the first top four match uh, between Ang Wei Wen and Li Jin Yang. Uh, both of these players have been here for a while and I'm pretty sure they are also both preparing for the respective uh, Nationals, yes. Mm. Uh, I saw Tae Young on stream earlier, and I think you did as well, very briefly. Uh, we do see the teams on the screen right now. Uh, so, so, so what do you think is a good lead for uh, uh, Wei Wen here? Oh, frankly, I do not know. I have not seen a Terrapagos team in action. Uh, it really goes to show how much of this format I actually play. But we do see that it is the mm. Choice Specs Terrapagos. You gotta wonder whether it is the... Uh, Terra Star Storm Sleep Talk set or something else entirely? It's a Terra Star Storm Sleep Talk set. I think good decision by Wei Wen here not to bring the Chiyu. Oh. I mean, because he's bringing Tornadoes and Ashiku, Chiyu will really go against his brain mode as well. Yes. Most of the time, you bring Chiyu to enable the damage of your uh, Choice Specs uh, oh. Terrible Ghost, which can throw off the damage cards of most people. Mm. Mm. Also, uh, let me stop you there. Before we continue, uh, Wei Wen and Tei Yang, if you can hear us, please say something now. <laughs> Alright, I gotta think that as a no, so we are ready we to went go to three. <laughs> we are ready to go into round uh, game number one of this top four. We see a Rillaboom and Urshipu lead uh, from Jin Yang here and a Flutterbeam and Tornadus lead from Wei Wen. So immediately putting out that tailwind pressure uh, along with the Flutterbeam. Uh, we see Grassy and we see Protosynthesis. It's very important here. What is it gonna be? It's gonna be speed. So even without the uh, even without the tailwind, not the fastest Pokemon on the field. Oh, and worth knowing that Tornado is Covert Cove here, so it's a pretty good uh, option to make sure that he has the priority in speed control, especially if he's trying to outspeed uh, Choice Guard Urshifu as well. Absolutely, completely immune to the Rally Worms uh, fake out. Uh, we do see. Actually, when Tsing Yang was playing against my Vice earlier, I didn't see a single bit of the Rally Worms, so I have no idea how the Rally Worms is EV. But I guess we will be finding out very very soon. We see the Terra coming up from uh, Tsing Yang's side. This is the Terra Water Urshifu. So, most likely he's gonna try and go for Surgeon Strikes and get damage somewhere across the field. Tornadoes and Urshifu, neither of them really like taking that damage. Tailwind, uh, supplementing the Flutterman, who is already the fastest Pokemon on the field. We do see it mm. last. Probably the Flutterman, uh, recognizing that he can lose the Fighting Pack Winners and survive and likely land a Surgeon Strike. Oh, oh like into the... goes into the Tornadoes and it looks like he's gonna pick up the KO this turn. Uh, yeah, uh, surging Strikes after I think it will, I think it will. Absolutely. Yeah. After, after Terra Water, that Surging Strike just does so much damage, the Tornadoes won't be able to take it and it falls. But the Flutterman is it. If Rilabu can go for good hammer here, and if he, he should KO in the grassy terrain. Ooh, a turn 1 double KO. I was just saying like how Wei Wen is in a pretty commanding position because he has both of the fastest Pokemon on the field. But we see that, you know, speed isn't everything. Just as easily as uh, he obtained the speed control, like Jin Yang just as easily managed to get two KOs on the first turn. So we see Wei Wen down to his last turn Pokemon here, Urshifu and the Terrapagos. But now, and, uh, Terra, Terra Burgers has really had the chance to shine because they can be able to Terra hit and do super effective damage to Urshifu they would otherwise not be able to. Absolutely, we still see the Terra shift uh, transforming baby Terra Burgers into actually playable Terra Burgers. What a beautiful sight. Ah, uh, however, what do you think of Terra Burgers as a Pokemon actually? I've always thought that Terra Burgers was very tricky to uh, navigate because mm. at the same time, uh, because like Terra, Terra Burgers is obviously at its full potential when it's uh, Stellar Terra. It gets the extra HP, extra stats, Terra Box Zero, removing the grassy terrain, and stopping the grassy fly, all like Korai, Mirai, all these things. Mm. However, like uh, base Terra Pagosa's Terra Shell ability is also so good too, because it like turns the first hit you receive to a not very effective hit. So, like, if you Terra Stars immediately, you lose the Terra Shell. Is that like. That's like the trade off. Mm. Like when you, you get when you Terra Stylize Terra Pogos, and it's something that all Terra Pogos players really have to consider and contend with when they're playing this Pokemon. Exactly, I think knowing the right time to uh, Terraform Zero is the most important part of being a Terra Pogos player. So, knowing when to balance the risk and benefit of having your uh, defenses being, I mean, not, not taking a so effective hit and versus doing more damage as well. So, here we see the Shirley Strike going to the Munger. Very good switch out by Jin Yan there. But very fortunately for Wei Wen as well, that Amungus is not rocking the helmet. So that Urshifu is gonna stay relatively healthy. Actually, what is this Amungus doing? This Amungus is holding a super yeah, 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 yeah. interesting. Terra Star Storm, massive Whoa. damage! However, fails to take out the KO on the Renewal, also fails to take out the KO on the Amungus. Amungus is gonna eat his citrus berry and go up to pretty respectable health. 
However, if the Terrastar Storm comes oh, out again, oh, yeah, how, yeah. However, if the Terrastar Storm comes out again next turn, it's really threatening a huge double KO here. Removing using Terraform Zero to remove the Grassy mm. Terrain that nerf the power of the Grassy Glide and allow a Shifu to actually uh, act before the uh, Rillaboo, which was huge. So it's a really nice Terraform Zero. Even if you're losing the Terra Shell, you're probably okay with that. You know, Terraform Zero hitting everything neutrally. Can you make Shadow Switch it? It's gonna get hit. Raging Ghost King, it's gonna get hit. And like, you know, uh, the funny thing also is with this thing is, you know, uh, you switch it to Terra or Shifu, it takes super well, effective damage. It's dead. It's gone. It's killed. But now, now uh, just to see how many more times of uh, Tailwind there is left because uh, now hopefully he's able to remove the two grass types so that his charge guard for Shifu can continue putting in putting damage. Mm. I'm fairly certain that uh, this is the second last turn of Tailwind we are seeing here so the Riddle Boom is switching out the Cadillac Shadow coming in actually. Uh, Cadillac Shadow, this one is Sashed. Uh, and we want... Yeah, it's Sash. Yeah. Wait, what's okay, it's Sash? Okay, I repeat, it's like you try talking into the Moongus, so that you can guarantee the knockout of your Terra Star Storm. Terra Star Storm. Exactly. Uh, it's a very safe Surging Strike too, uh, because Jin Zhiyang's uh, Moongus is not holding their Rocky Hell, but otherwise their Oshifu might be dead and gone right now. But uh, before the Moongus has a chance to end, we do see the Choice Specs Terra Star Storm coming out. Is it, we know this is going to kill the Moongus, but let's see how much damage this does to Calyrex Shadow. Mm. Ah, hell, very respectable damage. Crit not mattering on the Amoongus there. Mm, absolutely. The Amoongus, I think, was just like dead and gone. No more Rage Powder to direct the Surging Strikes away. Now we'll probably see Rilaboom coming in to set in the pressure of Fake Out, especially since it's only a Charge Pack item. Absolutely. Uh, but at the same time, it's just one turn too early, you know? Like, you can only Fake Out one of these Pokemon. The Terra Star Storm is going to come in and kill the Terra if you Fake Out the Yoshifu. Likewise, if you Fake Out the Terra Force, Yoshifu Surging Strikes is going to go into Cannon Shadow. Ooh, I think his best way would be Glide the... Yeah, Glide the Yoshifu to pick up the Knockout, but I'm not sure what his Cannon can do against uh, the Terra Force here too. So yeah. the case is Terra Force is faster under Tailwind, mm -hmm. presumably. Yeah, we do see the Terra Force outspeed under Tailwind. Uh, we went down to his last Pokemon, but it looks like it's not even going to matter here. Terra Star Storm bringing out both the Rillaboom and Calyrex in a single hit. Bring, and just like that, you know, Weyvon lost three Pokemon super early, uh, two Pokemon super early, then he lost the Yoshifu at a respectable time, but now Terrapagos is 1v1ing whatever the last Pokemon uh, is that. Yeah, it's gonna be the Terrapagos or Yoshifu. However, Yoshifu does boast a uh, kill combat here. So, so it's close to be better to close combat with KO, but I think it's close combat going to KO. It has a massive oh. amount of, a massive amount of HP saves the Rapagos from one hit knockout, living at such little health. And combined with the it's special defense drop, drop yeah. and uh, Terra Stars not being super effective against Terra Stalized Pokemon. This is almost a guaranteed knockout of this Urshifu. Mm. So Weyward, although he lost two Pokemon uh, at the start of the at the very start of the game on turn one. Manages to turn this around and take game one for himself. Very commanding, very nice show from Wei one over here. And Zhe Yang is definitely going to have to like take this time to carefully rethink and reconsider how he wants to approach game two. Hmm. I think I think it could have been different if he chosen to chose to uh, wood hammer the Ashifu that turn is uh, when he terraforms zero, and might have picked up picked up the KO on the Ashifu as well. But nonetheless, very well played by uh to be able to navigate, come back from having two Pokemon down from the first turn to be able to pick up the set. I think goes to show that you how powerful Terra, uh, Terra Pogos can, can be. Mm, absolutely. I honestly, uh, I like how um, Weiwen's uh, rental team, the the team name is Agro. So it's like Japanese Agro team. Like obviously you just want to set up tornadoes, you send in like Rapper Chiyu to Rapper Ghost, you just uh, wail on your opponent. Mm. How do you think Xin Yang will adapt for a game to if you think Yang? Honestly, I really feel like... Okay, so the four Pokemon that Xin Yang brought in the previous game were the Calyrex, the Rillaboom, the Incineroal, and the Amoongus and the Oshifu. Yeah. Uh, the Amoongus and the Oshifu, so they're pretty Incineroal. I was going to suggest that the two Pokemon that Xin Yang could bring in this matchup are the Incineroal and the Oshifu. Uh, the Incineroal and the Raging Bull. Mm. Because those two Pokemon have uh, potential to trade blow for blow with Terrapagos and... Uh, he, he obviously still needs to bring the Yoshifu because the Yoshifu is always going to be close on the game. But now we see a tornado and a Rapagos team. They were not holding anything back. Just going to go on the Rapagos like immediately in this like immediately from the get go in this game, seeing how it just basically swept through to the team almost effortlessly earlier.
I'm not sure but if he brought in Amogus, it would be a good time to switch in Amogus But I guess he didn't, so I guess he's switching out for Gotham in here We don't know, we, we'll just have to see that, mm. right? Because uh, I mean, we are seeing from Rima's perspective, we don't know what he's going to do uh, And even if we did Alright, we do see that we need to switch up Amogus to the Gotham in uh, Terrapagos being Wayward's uh, restricted Pokemon, obviously he doesn't want to take he doesn't want it to take that close combat damage immediately. So very astute switch going into Terrapagos, we'll see whether it pays off for him. <coughs> but first, we see the Terra coming out from Zing Yang. It's going to be the same Terra. It's going to be the Terra Water as you You think like, he, given the Terra Water, given the damage that the Terra Water did to Tornadus in the first game, he's yeah. definitely going to want to try and go like, close kill something like the middle of the dish, right? Uh, goes for the third strikes, and Tornado is not going for the Tornado system, it's just going to fall before it even gets to make the move. You get a nice turn around from Tignam there. However, uh, the Tornabagos is still alive, but without the Tornado to support it, it's uh, gonna be a very different game. I think good job by Tignam uh, here recognizing that Tornado is not going to start to switch track, and mo moving first to make sure it eliminates it as well. Honestly, I think it also was a really ballsy move coming out from uh, Tignam, given the fact that um, if you go for the expected play of like say Tailwind, Terra the Terrapagos, Terra Starstorm, you close combat it and then uh, Rillaboo, uh, I mean Rillaboo can just fake out the Terrapagos and you close combat it, then the Terrapagos is gone. Yeah. You saw how is the close combat. I feel like the damage that the close combat did at the, to the Terrapagos at the end of it, at the end there, what we saw then was really important. It's going to be really important to Zen Young's future in this tournament. Mm. He needs to remember, okay, I just need a little bit more chip damage on this Terrapagos and then my Oshibu can come in and pinch off. We do see uh, Stella Terra Terrapagos. But now with the uh, even though without Tailwind, uh Flutterman and uh, Terrapagos are likely to be faster from the field. Terraform zero. We're gonna remove the plus. I see win! So even without Tailwind, I see win is going to be way with speed control of points. And we see Terrasaur is not coming. We, we are most likely going to see a Terrasaur is not coming next. It's going to do massive damage to Red Bull and Amogus, even though I doubt that it can take it can pick up the floor. I don't know. And Amogus is not a big destroyer because it just switched in. Mm. And you know, Terrasaur is not what you want to switch in on. And that's huge damage, right? And then I, I think with a uh, well, with, with Platinum is the point, he can pick out a double kill. Would Hammer go to the Terrapagos doing the uh, necessary chip damage uh, to come in and clean later, hopefully. Mm. That's, I think that's the hope for Zinyang here. Because uh, Terrapagos is at that level of health, but it's going to continue picking Terra Star Storm. And Fluttermane, you know, a lot of people in this uh, regulation often to play just picks Fluttermane because it can put out, you know, a lot of damage. Mm. But uh, we went over here proving that uh, Booster Energy Fluttermane works just as well and gives you a lot more versatility. Uh, along with all the other god of players on the ice, you guys. <laughs> along with the IT means the pop, so even though he lost his formula, he's still able to scroll right further to the pop for his Terrapogos, uh, uh, given his booster, starting his house, and his first damage. Absolutely, and uh, with no priority moves coming up from uh, Tian Yang's side, it looks like Terrapogos is going to pick up a double KO this turn. Mm. Actually, right, uh, so tell me for your thoughts. Do you think, uh, what do you think of regulation like this? Uh, it's just obviously like even if you're not going to bring so much power to the table that you have to like constantly be wary of Pokemon like Terrapagos or Ravens as well if you can hear like Shadow on Tignan's side. The presence of any one restrictor on the field can be really fun at the game. I think it's been really fun so far to see the variety of new options that people have been bringing around to support the different restricted, whether it be new weather setters or new Pokemon that can of the different weather setters as well. So it's also cool to see uh, how Terrapagos also plays into this uh, Format as well, given that most of the time games can be determined by all the different types of terrain and all the different types of weather as well. It's cool to see how an anti meta per se can also work in both games. Absolutely. Very crucially, right now, Platamine is the fastest Pokemon on the field, can break the Sash. Uh, but yes, that Calyrex is Sash, so even if you Shadow Ball into the Calyrex, it will come back and fight with an Astro Barrage. We were recognizing this. Switches is the Rappagos, his win condition out of the DLC too. Maybe he is going to take a full combat this time on behalf of the Terrapagos. Uh, but we, okay, we do see a uh, Clarence's session broker and our ship rules uh, speed is as well lower. So Mara is going, uh, coming in. Rather than not gonna take that very well, our ship rule. Oshifu brought down to great health of Flutterbait is knocked out clean by the Astro Mara. I think, I think he should have uh, switched there given that Oshifu was stuck. Uh, I think he would go for the... Oh, but even he, I, I think he would have lost the first combat either way. Yeah, yeah so, uh, it's a very... It's a... I think, like, the chess, you, you know, like... Uh, 
we see here, Calyrex the king, you know, she put the rook and put Weaver into a zoop swap, so to speak. Now Tarapa goes to the last Pokemon, Gerald Star Swap is a powerful move, but can it knock out both the uh, Shifu and the Calyrex Shadow? Is the IC win going to be enough to carry Weaver to the end of this game? Mm -hmm. The Skyfall, oh. moving first. Okay, uh, but Urshifu is Scar, so it's short move before the Scar goes, and that brings uh, Taeyang 1-1 one one against Weyward, knocking out the Scar for this. I think uh, this game Taeyang did very well in dealing the first, bump, the first bit of damage that Taeyang does, so that Urshifu may come in and clean up later, recognizing you know, the changes that need to be made between game 1 and game 2, really important skill for players to have in long sets of best of 3. Losing for Nadus as well without being able to sell kill was also huge for Tin Yang because it ensures that even with the IC win support or without any kill, further kill wins, it's able to outspeed the Terraphogos to destroy Scarf or Shifu at the bare minimum. And with the guaranteed cheat from Rilabu onto Terraphogos, it's close combat will therefore be able to kill the main threat on the one side as well. Actually, I'd like to pick your brain a little bit more about the state of this format, right? Uh, this is, I think, the first time in Pokemon history we've had a single restricted format. Because every other time, uh, we go into a rotation of like, uh, local decks, national decks, and then national decks with restricted Pokemon. But any time restricted Pokemon are allowed, it's two at a time. Uh, we cast our mind back to years like uh, 2016, where uh, Zen uh, Zendon was part of the Big Six. Uh, 2019, and then... Uh, well, we took a break for a while because, uh, you know, COVID and all that, but we eventually got like, uh, Zacia dominating, Zacia and Kodo dominating the metagame, and now we have Restrictors back, but it's a single Restrictor, and I feel like that's really like, a metagame where a lot more than ever before, people are playing a very Protect the King playstyle. Mm. You really want to protect your Calyrexus, you really want to protect your Tarapagos, you really want to protect your Zamazentas, etc, etc. Because Restrictors are just, one Restrictor is just so powerful, it swings the game entirely by itself. And I think that's what we are seeing here, the Rubber Boss is completely swinging Wayward's game here. So they are both leading with the same beat as the game too, so they should think we'll see what uh, switch up to their enemy will be this time. I think uh, Wayward let those Tornadoes fade way too early in the previous game, it really did nothing for him in game 2. Hmm, I think going for the turn here is okay, but now he's putting himself at risk right, by terrorizing and getting his Terrible Ghost to take out in close combat. Can KO his Terrible Ghost, but at the same time, he has to get fair in mind that in game 2, we're even switching into the start as well. Yeah. Yeah. Then he goes to show uh, what degree of mind games these, these players are playing at right now. Uh, do you fancy yourself the kind of player to like, over things or under things for your opponent? I think I, I tend to overthink most of the time, which is why I, uh, I feel like for new players especially, you should try to stick to the simple game of like Dice Fair and Mongo Go. Most of the time, you have to think, and there's only like, one skill on two cards, one skill for you to see. Oh man, don't remind me. I think Dice Fair is going around a lot right now, especially if you've played Showdown recently, or you've been like seeing uh, Showdown Discourse on Twitter recently, you've seen that team, the Gloom and Dugong team. Uh, we did have a Gloom and Dugong team at our event today, however, you know, uh, unfortunately, we didn't make it, it didn't make it the top cut, so we are watching. So, no pick out, so you get three Terra Stars from Three Terra Stars from Tailwind and Terra Stars from. Yeah, don't pick out a Tail, do you have any other guys that are like. Absolutely. Rinder Boom is only the assault, but it's a pretty good hit on the Rinder Boom as well. Rinder Boom is really taking it very well. Karapagos, uh, surviving the close combat with a sniffle of health, like we've seen before. Uh, okay, so Rinder Boom is going to rush fly. So the intent, I think, was to uh, guarantee the knockout. Yeah, to guarantee the knockout of the Tarapagos, but I think like Tin Yang intended for the Jurassic Land to hit first, and then like, you know, if the Tornado goes for an attack or anything that isn't killed with, mm. the uh, Shifu is just going to close combat the Tarapagos before it can even do anything. Mm, that's true. But now, even with Tarapagos missing, uh, we have to see how we even respond, because it's any form of damage is it, not uh, present anymore. How do you think of it? Uh, but we like like double, double targeting the Terrapagos is so safe given the fact that it shows specs and it's going to protect itself with some sweeping out. Yeah. But, so the tail it. but given uh, not only this, he also has a uh, huge role to play because it, it needs to land both Big Wings here as well to get, get a pretty safe kill. But that means, uh, so it really depends on Big Wings hitting either one of the targets now. Oh, yeah, but the main boom dust will probably target the level. You think there's anything else that the tornadoes can do besides blinking in this situation? Like, uh, what does this tornado actually do? Let's see. Yeah, you can have rain dance, you can put that in the I feel like rain dance enables the opponent more than it does you at this stage. 
considering you know he's the one in the Terra Water or Shifu and not you. That's very true as well. But now you see, I'm just picking in with the lightning and the bottle to pick it as well as the lightning card. Yeah, we're not doing the lightning. Right. The lightning is out of its uh, flying weakness, so even if it takes a bleak wind bleak storm, it might be able to pick it on the chin and hit Fluttermane back for massive damage with something like Golden Hammer. Right? Uh, Fluttermane going for the enemy is not very effective. Uh, yeah, let's see how big we hit. You know, I'm really concerned. I know, oh my god, hit on the uh, Fortune is not figuring the Thriller Book. It took a crit from the Terra Star Stop. It's taking a crit from the Icy Wind. It doesn't really matter. And Thriller Book is to hit. But the Thriller Book survived. In, in the face of two critical hits, it terrestrializes to survive the Bleak Wind Storm. Its speed does fall, but I don't think it really matters because both of Wayward's Pokemon have already moved. Amogus is going to eat the Citrus Berry and heal itself back up. Like we, well, like we mentioned, would have a going to the Fluttermane, taking out in a single hit. If you're Tsing Yang, you have to be very happy about this result, right? <laughs> like your Rilla Boom has been here, it's done the, the necessary chip to the Terra Bagon. Yeah, every critical hit. Take every critical hit, it's killed the Fluttermane, it's going out on its own terms, having taken out like two of Wayward's massive threats. Now it's just Tornadoes, and the last Pokemon from Wayward's side, it's going to be the Choice Star Urshifu. So now, now, is, now would be a good opportunity for uh, Wayward to potentially set up the raid. But it's important here that because the Urshifu on uh, Wayward's side is faster than his Tornadoes, so Among Us has the very free, one free Rage Powder to go first. Oh, you know, like, the enable is Terra Rider to be safe from Hershey Food. Oh, I mean, Rage Powder is always, is always going to go before Terra because Rage Powder is just too good. I mean, like, you're surging before Bleeding. Ah, yes. Uh, so, because you're always surging first, so Bleeding cannot heal your team, just allowing his surging strike to kill the Terra I think that's the break when you're playing something like a Choice Scout or Shifu, you know. Uh, surging Strikes uh, goes into the Amogus, which we established earlier. It's not a lot of power, so that kind of gives a Shifu a little bit more survivability. Uh, which is going to matter considering we saw the Urshifu tank the Astro Barrage earlier. So here's the show and uh... Blink Blink Storm! Hits both, hits both targets! Okay. But now the Tyrex is protected by the Amogus is free to land a uh, Astro Barrage and then we are able to see how much damage it does here. Still though, this looks like a very like livable game for both players at this point. Urshifu is going to be taken out! Oh, 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 I need the side shot! Side shot! Oh, actually surviving side shot. This is uh, unprecedented! He's a uh, huge survivor here. Absolutely huge! Because I'm pretty sure, um... Zen Yang is also on his last two Pokemon, isn't he? Oh, yes, but he's able to Aqua Jet this turn. And he, he's able to take out the Shifu. Oh! And he can lock him trying to go for the Aqua Jet. Yeah, but uh, the Choice Scarf! Uh, prevents the use of any move except and the first one you click. Tony is going to be able to do enough damage uh, unless the uh, crit perhaps on the Calyrex Shadow mm -hmm. allowing Calyrex to uh, pick it up with extra barrage. Yeah, it's found himself in a situation where he really wishes he could just pick another move. So, like, choice items, they boost your Pokemon stats by a lot. They are very attractive, but you have to remember at times like these, they are also very, very skill testing. Mm, really realizing your position now. Oh, he oh. go for the Aqua Jet! So, Calyrex will just paint to. So, they try us! Okay, the Calyrex Shadow won't be able to take the Sonic Strikes, so Calyrex Shadow goes down before it gets to fire off the National Barrage. Very huge knockoff away Wayward here. Looks like the game is almost over at this point. Did he actually did he not have a first uh, city uh, It does have an Aqua Jet, but it's scarfed as well, so I would assume it, it doesn't want to lock itself into Aqua Jet. It was the first turn, and now the game is just over. Ah, well, he should have, uh, I feel like no, because if you Aqua Jet, you don't have a way to kill the Fornitas. Yeah, Astra Barrage. I'm so this can't blink me and kill the extra barrage. Huh? Yeah. Oh, no, I mean, uh, it's game 3. These players are playing very high stakes games right now. And sometimes you just get tunnel vision like that. It's very hard to see the game that's like right in front of you. Especially since when you're playing Ashiku and 90% of the time you're taking certain strikes. Absolutely. I think all of us have been there. We know exactly what that feels like. But all the same, kudos to both players for making the top four and giving us a really good show with this match. Uh, you and know. congratulations to Wayward again for making it to the finals with the Terrapagus as well. We're excited to see how his Terrapagus pairs out in the final. Yes, we'll see uh, how Wayward protects the king going into the finals. Okay, thank you for watching. We'll see you back in the final soon. Take care. Stay tuned. Cool. <laughs>